Hi everybody, my name is Gary and I'm going to be your chess coach for today. So solve these five favorite chess puzzles of mine and help sharpen your chess calculation ability. Okay, let's go. So the first position is really simple but extremely complicated. It's white to move and win. So think like you're in an actual chess game yourself. All right, pause the video, solve it, and I'll come back. Ready? Go. All right. So first things first, how do you even approach this position? I would say first, make an observation about the position, take stock of what's happening, and then try to find what is your goal and what is your opponent's goal. This is a very important step. So our goal, it seems to be, is to promote the pawn. It's an end game after all. That's a pass pawn, and making a queen would help you in the game. Okay, so the most obvious move for that would be just to push the pawn. That's what most of my students actually tell me. And then they tell me for black, black plays a5, we play here, and there's a race. And white wins the race. Not only does he queen, we stop them from queening as well. And then they tell me, okay, yeah, that's it. Wrong. That's a very common way of thinking, and there's a lot of flaws in that mode of thinking. So let's see what went wrong here. First of all, white only considered one move that they can play and only considered one option that their opponent can play. The whole point of calculation is to figure out the best play for both sides. So h4, while it is a very natural move trying to get to our goal, white failed to calculate black's best move, which is actually pawn takes b5. The difference now is that in the race, black queens on the other square b one, and then his queen is safe from the other queen. And in this position, it might be black that wins the game because he's an extra pawn, or maybe white can manage to get a draw. Okay, so we clearly see a mistake. This kind of chess is actually called hope chess. I hope my opponent plays the worst move, and that's how I justify my move. What we want to play instead is the best chess, the best move for both sides. So then another hint I have for you to find the best move in your calculation is to take stock of the forcing moves in the position. So moves that will help you get your goal and the forcing moves and how are they connected to that goal. There's a forcing move of a capture and a check here. So it should be important to calculate both of these moves. Let's first calculate the natural takes. Okay, black takes. Ah, oh, now if you go here, there's no option of taking the pawn anymore. That's how it's connected to the goal. And there's a race. Okay, great. And white wins. Great. So does that mean that pawn takes a6 is the answer? Wrong. Because the same thing. Hope chess. Black will not take the pawn. Instead, black has a much better move. A lot of people get really emotional when they calculate. They see a win and they think, oh, that must be the right answer. But actually, they should calm down and find the best counter for their opponent. Find the best defense. So after b5... Black actually wins the race because Black spent a tempo on pushing the pawn instead of taking it, which would be a waste of time. So Black queens first. And not only that, to make matters worse, since Black queen first, there is a lineup of king and queen in this position, which Black will use, queen b8. And it is white that loses the game. So h4 is a draw. B takes aces actually loses. What about that final move? B6 check. That just looks bad because it just loses a pawn. But remember, ask the question, how does my 4C move help with my goal? Or does it? Well, what changes in the position? Well, the B pawn is gone, so there's no takes. So the pawn cannot magically queen over here. And the other move, B5, is now blocked. So now... If I play h4, black has no defense. He has to push the a pawn, and then we can queen and prevent them from queening, and white wins. That's the answer, b6. Now, before we play this move, in our calculation, we should make sure not to play hope chess, right? Is there anything else that black can do? Well, maybe the king can try to catch the pawn. How do we know? Well, I'm going to show you this cool thing called the rule of the square. So you go diagonally like that to make a... A square basically and if the opponent's king can enter the square 
that means they'll cast the pawn. But it seems like they're one move behind because with each of our pawn pushing, the square becomes smaller. So now it's a really tiny square. <laughs> and at the end, the square is actually a square. <laughs> so white wins. Okay, so that's the answer. This is a really fun puzzle because it looks really simple, but we can see a lot of our flaws in our thinking when we start to solve this one, namely forgetting the opponent's best move. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one is even simpler, but tricky. White to play and win. Pause the video. Ready? All right. If you told me rook h7 wins the game, you are wrong. <laughs> you think that'd be easy? Well, no, because rook h7 seems like white is just winning the rook. Okay. What's the problem here? Stalemate. Again, seeing something good and immediately playing it impulsively is one of the best ways or the worst ways we can make a mistake, right? So rook h7, a lot of students of mine tell me this move and end up getting it wrong. After this, basically white lost his opportunity to win the game. Now, remember the mantra, what are my 4C moves connected to the goal? What is the goal? Well, the goal seemed to be to use this lineup to win the rook, which clearly didn't work because of stalemate. Okay, what are some 4C moves here? Well, there's rook d6 check and e6 check. 4C moves essentially force the opponent to walk down a, a narrow path, right? Now, rook d6 check, unfortunately, doesn't seem to f follow um, what we want to do, right? Because then there, there's no more rook h7. So if it goes here, we don't have a good follow-up. So that must be incorrect. What about e6 check? Hmm. This one looks more promising. Because if the king goes to e7, now our idea works because the pawn has disappeared. So essentially, we sacrificed the pawn, and the king is not stalemated, and this should be winning for white. Okay, but remember, what is the best defense for black? Let's make a list. So black could go here, which we solved. Black could go here, and you have the three. I'll put this as similar in the same bucket, or black can go up the board. Okay. So if black goes down here or here, we can simply do the same thing of checking what are the forcing moves and how are they connected to my goal. This one pushes the king back, and then we can do this, and then we win the rook. Okay, so same thing, we can recycle. Recycling is not only for the environment, but also for your chess. So we can recycle the same move here, and then here, win the rook, and same for king e8, right? Reduce, reuse, and recycle. So same thing. Okay, what about the other one? The other move was after e6, the king can go to d6. Hmm. It seems like he's escaping the check, but we have another check. Discover check, e7. How is that connected to my goal? Well, it forces the king to deal with the promotion. If the king takes, we can check, win the rook. If the king goes to d7, which is the best defense, we have to do the same thing again. What are the forcing moves? How are they connected to my goal? Well, we have a beautiful move e8, which forces the king to take, and then we check, come back, check again, and win the game. So again, the mantra of what are the forcing moves and how are they connected to my goal is a key answer. And the opponent's defense, how can the opponent stop me from getting my goal? That way you'll find the best moves for both sides and your calculation will be very precise. So another question, common answer I get is, People might tell me, hey, why not just king f5? Helping me maybe check or push the pawn. Well, the reason why this move is not the solution is because it is not a 4c move and it's just kind of an open-ended move. For example, if black plays rook a1, I would call this move just playing chess. When you just play chess, there are a million different possibilities, a million different variables your opponent can defend. You're not really forcing the play down a certain path where you're guaranteed to win. So this one, you know, we can check here. Maybe I'll come here. Maybe he'll check again. So you're just playing chess. There's no forced win here, right? It might be actually be a draw. So that's why forcing was so important because your opponent has only one or two options and then those options don't work. Then you'll win a rook or queen or checkmate and win the game. All right. So again, four pieces or 
How many pieces do we have? Five pieces? And this position is so complicated. Let's go to the next position. Okay, this one is an absolute beauty. It's white to play and win the game. White's pawns are going up the board, by the way, and black's pawns are coming down here. Pause the video. Ready? All right. So the first move for white is rook to a4 check. Before we dive into it, let's actually talk about the goal here. It seems like white is down material and his knight's trapped, and white seems to be in a losing position. However, this king seems kind of exposed. So maybe we have some forcing moves that take advantage of the exposed king. The only move that we can explore is rook a4 check. Okay, now black can play here or here. If he goes to king c5, we can win the queen so that we can cross that off. And if he goes king to e5, now it seems like maybe we're making progress. The king and the queen are lined up. Okay, so now I have several other forcing moves, like checks, checks here. These don't work because then after this move, you know, white doesn't have a follow-up. Now there is a move here. If you do your tactics, you'll spot these quickly. This knight coming here would be a check. The presence of a check. That is, and this knight happens to cover this square. How can we put that together? Ah, a forcing move, a threat. Rook a5, rook sacrifice, a deflection. And the queen takes knight check, and we win the queen for a rook, and we have a winning position with an extra knight and pawn. But wait, there's more. Remember, we still had to find the best defense for black. So in this position, what move can black play? Ah, he has a pawn. Pawn to c5. Okay, if you didn't find this move so far, I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself. White to play and find a beautiful winning move and the hint is it's a rook sacrifice followed by a pawn sacrifice got it so rook takes c5 a seemingly weird rook sacrifice but the point is to get the king and the queen in a position where the knight can fork it but it seems like i can't yet right well that's why you play d4 this is such a pretty move no matter how the king or the queen takes the pawn, there's always going to be a fork. What a beautiful geometry. If the king takes, there's a fork like this. Queen takes, there's a fork like this. And now the puzzle is not over yet. Now we got to show our end game technique. If the king gets to block the pawn, it'll be a draw. So we got to go king f3. King tries to block. We got to go king here. And then this move. And finally, this is a winning position where our king can shoulder, based on where the other king goes, we can shoulder the king and then roll out the red carpet for our pawn. So amazing puzzle where we have to sacrifice our rook and pawn to get a fork. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a really cool puzzle that displays the skewer and pin tactics. Okay, white to plan min. What is the goal here? It seems like we are down a queen, but we have a rook and a bishop. But the queen is kind of trapped and the king is exposed. Do I have any 4C moves here that can take advantage of that? Hmm. I have a checks, but they don't seem to lead anywhere. What about this move? Well, if he takes, we get a queen. That's a good sign that this 4C move might be something that works. So. If I go here, black has to play either queen h8 or queen g8. If queen h8, the queen has no squares except for this rank. And now, once again, we have forcing move here, check. We have a check here. We also have a rook sacrifice. How do these connect? Ah, the bishop actually covers this. So it's almost as if this square was already protected. So we can either play bishop e4 check and then rook a8, which traps the queen, or we can be more tricky and play rook a8 first. They take, we check, and win the queen, and then we'll be up. So, so far so good. Black's two defenses to this move has failed. What about this one? This is like 
the better one, right? Because the queen has more freedom. Now it's more uh, hard to trap. Okay. So our goal still remains the same, to try to tap the queen and to take advantage of the king being so open, right? When you have checks like this, when you have checks on the, on the uh, king, you have to think about it like this. These squares are actually covered because of the bishop, check, bishop checking. This square, these squares are actually covered because of the rook checking, right? This will come in handy later. And so our following move, remember we had to recycle the same idea, rook a8, does it work? Well, we already know what happens if they take the check. What about the new options? So there's queen e6, there's queen d5, there's queen c4, and the final boss, queen a2. Let's solve for each one. So if you wanna, if you didn't get the first one right and you wanna solve this, feel free to pause the video and tell me what happens for each variation. So remember what I said earlier about the checks covering more squares than you think? So the rook covers all of this. It also covers all of this. And the bishop covers all of this. So no matter, so the queen going here, here, and here are actually already solved. And by the way, it can't go here because this pawn is protected. So if he goes here, we check. If he goes here, we pin. And if he goes here, we skewer. Amazing, right? How can a bishop and a rook cover so many squares? Well, that is the power of checks, ladies and gentlemen. When you have checks on the board, you multiply the power of your pieces. So the final boss is queen a2. Okay, he's threatening to check. And if he starts checking, your opponent takes your ball and starts running with the ball. He has the initiative. You don't want that. So what forcing move do we have? Hmm. Checks, captures, and threats. Well, there's a, there's a capture threat. Rook takes a4. What? Because of bishop e8. When there are checks, the power of your pieces are amplified. Rook takes a4. Can't take because of the, this move. So the only thing that black can do here is to go back home because all these squares are already covered. Well, can we recycle the same idea? Absolutely. Rook a8. We have the same exact position, but the only difference now is that the pawn is gone. And now black finds himself out of squares and the queen is trapped and white wins the game. This is one of my favorite puzzles to teach students because it has so many beautiful uh, geometry here. Chess is such a beautiful game once you get to uh, explore it a bit more. Okay, I hope that inspired you. Let's go to the next one. Okay, it's the last puzzle. A very simple position with only five pieces. But as we have seen so far, it might be deceiving, right? The looks. So white to play and win again. What is the goal? It seems like... Maybe the exposed king could be a skewer, right? What are the four C moves that can be connected here? Obviously, the rook D1 is worth exploring because it lines it up. So let's explore that. You know, even if the answer is wrong, uh, it will give us some ideas to improve uh, in our next uh, guess, right? So maybe different move for white here. So rook D1, what are black's options? King here, king here, king here. What happens if king here? Ah, I have a check and I protect my rook. And then I win the rook and win the game. Great. What about king c2? Similar. This time I have a check on e3, and then I win the rook. Great. So it seems like this move might be the right answer. How, how about this one? Knight e3. Oh, no. Unfortunately, black's king is close enough to protect it, and this is a draw. So rook d1 is almost correct, but it doesn't work because of the king c5. So what do we do now when it does something doesn't work, but it almost does? Well, we fixed that problem. What other moves do we have that can make this work? Well, right now, our knight's under attack too. We have some checks, but if you play this, remember we lose that goal and now we're just playing chess. This is just a regular game and it's probably gonna be a draw. Anything else we can play? That one, same thing. We're just playing chess, nothing happens. What about this one? That is a forcing move. It's attacking the rook. It seems like black should have many, many moves. But let's think again. The rook can go here and here. And it can go here, 
here and only here. You might think, you know, it looked like the root can go many, many squares, but actually it can't go here because of the checks. And same thing for this. And then this for this. Once again, when there are four C moves and when there are checks, the knight is not only covering these squares, we should amplify it. The knight is actually extending it by this square. And it's also covering this square and this square. Isn't that amazing? It's covering a lot more squares than you think. Okay, so the rook could come down to d7 or d8. They look similar. Let's do d8 because it's farther away. Okay, remember the idea that we didn't work before? Let's recycle that. Rook d1 check. Does it work now? If king c4, this was the move that helped black before, we can go knight e3. And now the rook's far away. So this is very interesting. What came first, the idea or the forcing move, right? The, the key to being a good tactician and calculator in chess is to combine your human idea side of what we're trying to achieve and the computer-like finding of forcing moves. Even if they look kind of bad, sometimes you had to give it a chance. This one looked like it didn't really work because it seems like an open-ended move, but on second thought, it was actually very limiting for, for black, right? So combining the logical side of thinking and the computer like finding the checks and captures, combine that together and then you will be a really good chess player and keep working on it by doing puzzles like this. Okay, I really hope that this video helps you get better at chess and I hope that you solved it and uh, watch it again if in a few months maybe and try to solve it again, see how your thought process has improved. All right, so I'm signing off. I'll see you later in the next video. Have a wonderful day.